In this session, we will discuss research, knowledge, theory, originality, and research process models. Let's start with the research. By definition, research is the scholarly or scientific investigation or inquiry about a particular topic. And it's again a close, careful study about a particular subject. And as a verb, it is also to study something truly so as to present it in a detailed and accurate manner. For example, someone can research the effects of acid rain could be interesting or the area of your study for example and what is study it is uh, the pursuit of knowledge as by reading observation or research we're seeking knowledge here it's very important like uh, we need it is our ultimate destination or something like this it is done by again attentive scrutiny and it is also as a verb to apply one's mind purposefully to the acquisition of knowledge or understanding of a particular subject or to inquire into or investigate again a particular subject or another definition is to examine closely and scrutinize okay so what is research by the definition in Wikipedia? It is an active, diligent, and systematic process of inquiry in order to discover. Look, it's, you can discover or interpret or revise the facts, some happenings, events, behaviors. You do this for behaviors or theories. See, you can discover, interpret, or revise the theories or uh, you can do research for something to make practical applications with the help of, again, those facts, laws, or theories. This is more like the uh, application domain of uh, research. Most of our, uh, I mean, studies in computer engineering, uh, master and PhD programs based on making some applications usually. Uh, the theoretical research is re reserved for more for computer science studies maybe. Maybe this is, uh, of course there can be, uh, I mean, uh, corresponding parts between them, but that's roughly the situation here. So it's a collection of information about a particular subject and it is driven from the middle French and it's the, the literal meaning is to investigate truly something. Okay. And what is the definition of research by the Higher Education Funding Council of for England? It I think it can be more or less corresponding to similar to our institution to Vitak in Turkey, maybe. So that definition also can be interesting. It is the original investigation undertaken in order to gain knowledge and understanding, including work of direct relevance to the needs of commerce and industry and to the public and voluntary sectors, like uh, you, you're, you're addressing their needs here, or uh, it, it is done for scholarship, like the uh, like in a research inf infrastructure or something. Like uh, you did this on uh, in an infrastructure, and the invention and generation of ideas, images, performances, and artifacts, including design, where these lead to new or substantially improved insights. So you're just focusing on the invention and generation of ideas, images, performances, and artifacts, including design to uh, to make life better, okay, having improved insights, and the use of existing knowledge in experimental development to produce new or substantially improved materials, devices, products, and processes, including design and construction. Uh, again, it should be beneficial of in some way. Okay. And what is knowledge, our ultimate destination here? Knowledge is, a, in fact, a particular level in hierarchy. You cannot directly, uh, I mean, uh, acquire knowledge. It has some steps. You first work on data, usually. 
then from data you get some information and from information you get the knowledge having wisdom about something is a bit different which is out of the scope of this uh, let's say uh, session knowledge uh, but let's just make a, a distinction here in fact uh, if you're curious about it knowledge is knowing what to say wisdom is knowing whether or not to say it this is a saying maybe just to have an idea about what wisdom is and this is again a, an, an interesting example that makes me uh, help me to make the difference between them knowledge is knowing that tomato is a fruit but wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad it, it uh, so i think uh, i hope it makes sense you can uh, work on, uh, or make research on it if you like more if you're interested more about it but we're trying to uh, get to knowledge here in our research studies usually so let's start with the data here okay so the data or datum is the statements accepted at face value as given and presented as numbers characters images or sounds so we're talking about the, the real measurable uh, raw data here or raw uh, statements here it is a large class of practically important statements uh, like the measurements observations of variables objects or events uh, you measure them and in a computing context in a form this data which can be assessed stored processed and transmitted by a computer so data takes into this form of definition in the domain of uh, computing that's what what we're interesting for so if we can uh, store this uh, phenomenon as a, and process it and transmit by a computer it becomes it becomes data for us so what is information information uh, uh, we should know that data on its own has no meaning so okay x means uh, x equals for example 4.5 has no meaning uh, unless we uh, make some interconnections uh, with the, uh, the the domain we're working on so it it, it is a only meaningful when interpreted by some kind of data processing system uh then it takes a meaning and transforms or becomes information for example the human genome project has determined the sequ sequence of the three billion chemical base pairs that make up human dna so what we do here is identifying the base pairs produces just raw data but uh, information results from uh, it will tell us what they do so th then they become information otherwise they are just raw data and what is knowledge it's the let's look take a look at the definition by Dawson in 2005 it is higher level understanding of things it represents our understanding of the why instead of mere what is happening here okay what is happening here is another question and but why is this happening can be more interesting question here and it is the interpretation of information in the form of rules patterns decisions models ideas etc here this is what we usually seek and what we usually seek in our master and uh, phd studies here we ask we try to ask the question uh, how usually in computer engineering particularly in natural sciences also in our in other engineering disciplines as well in natural sciences understanding why is too ambitious for most of the time okay why are the planets uh, let's say uh, circling around the sun or something like this uh, i mean it's not uh, uh, it is how is usually what we aim for what is the let's say uh, theory that it keeps them uh, to, uh, um, rotating like that or something and how is the critical question here in our studies usually and in other areas like in sociology or social sciences 
understanding how it's trivial. I mean, how people are investing in, for example, uh, cryptocurrency, for example, uh, like uh, it doesn't have a meaning, but why they are doing this, then it, it, it can become, <coughs> sorry, more important here in this sense. So knowledge, again, let's take a look at the definition from Wikipedia. Knowledge is the awareness and understanding of facts, truths, or information gained in the form of experience or learning. It is like induction, like uh, the induction, inductive processing or true deductive reasoning. So it can take, uh, it can be acquired in both forms. And uh, we will talk about them later. And appreciation of the possession of interconnected details, which in isolation are of lesser value. This is an outer definition. And both knowledge and information consists of true statements, but knowledge is information that has a purpose or use. That's the, let's say, critical difference here. Information, we have information, like the, let's say, uh, uh, upgraded or let's say more meaningful version of data information plus intentionality why did we or how we get to <coughs> this information here okay so what is theory briefly scientific knowledge is often organized into theories and uh, what is a theory again a definition from wikipedia it is a logically self-consistent model, self-consistent in itself, or framework describing the behavior of a certain natural or social phenomenon, thus either originating from observable facts or supported by them. Again, inductive and deductive reasoning comes into, let's say, uh, play here. And what is a theory? Again, it's formulated, developed, and evaluated according to the scientific method. This is what we're uh, interested in. And ha ha the scientific method is what we're always revolving around throughout this lecture. Okay, theory is a body of descriptions of knowledge is usually only called a theory once it has a firm empirical basis. That is, it should be consistent with pre-existing theories to the extent that the pre-existing theory was experimentally verified before, though it will often show pre-existing theory to be wrong in an exact sense. I mean, we usually uh, say, um, work on or researchers usually work on to refute the existing theories by means of scientific uh, approach and theory again it is supported by many strains of uh, strands of evidence rather than a single foundation it means that it should be like you need to work on lots and lots of data or many different parties uh, should work on the same topic ensuring that it probably is a good approximation if not totally correct we can never know that it is totally correct but we can ensure that it is probably a good approximation or good explanation explanation of a phenomenon that we're uh, interested in or we're studying on and it makes testable predictions that might someday may be used to disprove the theory so it should be available, like there should be open doors for refuting later. I mean, uh, maybe it's a valid theory as of uh, 2020, but okay, it can be obsolete or it can be refuted in 2000, for example, uh, 90, for, let's say it should, it, it, it is also a property of a theory. And it has survived many critical real-world tests that could have proven it false. So many researchers should study on it. We discussed this a few moments before. And it should survive many critical real-world tests so that it can be called a theory. And a theory is the best known explanation in the sense of an Occam's razor of the infinite variety of exp alternative explanations of the same data. Okay, so you, you want to, uh, let's say, explain an event, 
uh, and there can be numerous uh, possibilities uh, or numerous explanations of this one. Usually, uh, the theory makes this explanations as uh, let's say as simple as possible. That's the idea. I mean, Occam's razor is briefly if uh, let's say if an if an event has let's say five different uh reasons for happening most probably the most uh, straightforward one is the uh, origin of this uh, occurrence it's, it makes sense in most of the uh, real uh, world events and also in our relationships whatever you can you, you can i mean Occam's razor can easily be fit into social uh let's say sciences uh, studies as well i guess okay so what is a fact uh okay this is the let's say ideal and mostly unreachable state of uh occurrence okay for example evolution is only a theory but not a fact because i mean the fact is what you know with without question so, a fact is a truth, a statement confirming to reality, or data supported by scientific ex experiments, most, uh, lots and lots of them. So, status of truth is by and large unachievable. Uh, I mean, it's an, it's an ideal that we seek, but we can never reach it, reach it. A theory is formulated, developed, and evaluated according to the scientific method. So it's now this can be, let's say, more practical. And given enough experimental support, a theory can be a fact. It is possible to, theoretically, to turn a theory into a fact uh, by means of uh, enough experimental support. But it, 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 is, it takes, I mean, like uh, infinitely many. Uh, experimental support, lots of uh, experimental support to turn a theory into a fact, of course. And originality is what we seek in our, uh, especially not in master studies, I think it would be a bit challenging to say that, but in our PhD studies, we seek originality. What is this? So. It is the original investigation undertaken in order to gain knowledge and understanding. So, it's the uh, doing something that has not been done before. This is briefly uh, the explanation of originality. We, we, we're trying to be unique in our uh, research. Dawson, uh, again, explains it as there is no point in repeating the work of others and discovering or producing what is already known. Yes, that, of course, that is, uh, 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 it is, I mean, uh, pointless. It is only true for what is truly known, like we knew. Okay, theories make predictions which need to be tested, and the people performing those tests are neither infallible or nor trustworthy, and tests need to be repeated and the results should be replicated. So, I mean, all of these theories should be tested by other people as well because people can make mistakes, I mean, uh, deliberately or not. I mean, uh, just by, mis uh, just by uh, doing normal mistakes. Uh, some people uh, can do this on purpose as well. Of course, this is related to Eric's part of the lecture. So, fallibility is an issue. There is a, I mean, the studies or theories can be fallible as well. The, the example that the uh, Professor Hustad gives here is the cold fusion example taken from Wikipedia, once famous. It is the nuclear fusion reaction that occurs well below temperature required for thermonuclear reactions, that is near ambient temperatures instead of millions of degrees of Celsius, which is very, very interesting and like a, a, a hot topic for its time. 
It was first reported to have been achieved by University of Utah and University of Southampton, the researchers uh, working there, Pons and Fleischmann. And the scientists tried to replicate the results shortly after the initial announcement, like the initial teams at Texas and Georgia Institute of Technology uh, first confirmed the results but then withdraw those claims due to lack of evidence and vast majority of experiments failed in that sense so uh, so they need to be tested by our researchers as well because researchers can be fallible that's the idea and let's take a look at the investigation it is an active diligent and a systematic process of inquiry taken from wikipedia and scientists use observations and reasoning to develop technologies and propose explanations for natural phenomena in the firm form of hypotheses. And predictions from these hypotheses are tested by experiment and further technologies are developed. And any hypothesis which is cogent enough to make predictions then can be tested reproducibly in this way. Once it has been established that a hypothesis is sound, it becomes a theory. Sometimes scientific development takes place differently with a theory first being developed, gaining support on the basis of its logic and principles. Okay, again, the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning here. So for the originality areas like you can, how can you achieve originality here by exploring the unknown? like to investigate a field that no one has investigated before or exploring the unanticipated, obtaining unexpected results and investigating new directions in an already existing field. This is also very common. And we can also may have some originality by uh, the use of data, interpret, it, interpret the data in new ways. So it, it is again, it makes our research original. And the tools and techniques and procedures and methods that we use for it, we can apply those new tools, techniques to alternative problems and try procedures, methods in new context to make our work uh, or that makes our work original. And what is a contribution? Uh, as long as it is original, it can, it, 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 there is a possibility that it can make a contribution. So contribution, uh, means that your research is supposed to add to the world's body of knowledge and understanding. It is in contrast to adding to researchers knowledge and understanding. Okay, now here in this level, that's why our studies or our uh, publications are reviewed by the experts in our domain. For example, if you're uh, proposing a paper in web-based learning, for example, the the uh, top people or top scientists in that area evaluate your mm, paper so that uh, I mean uh, you, 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 so they, they can judge that you really made a contribution here okay so what, what are the research process models we have briefly four research process models here all definitions agree that research involves a systematic or method uh, methodological uh, pr process uh, these are the main ones are sequential, generalized, circulatory and evolutionary models of uh, research. Let's take a look at them one by one. Sequential research process model is the research process as it, I mean, evaluates the research process as a series of activities and performed one after another sequentially in a fixed linear uh, series of stages. Like uh, you can have greenfield steps here like uh, it's going like this, review the field, build the theory, test the theory, and reflect and integrate. And Sharps is a bit more you know, like uh, understandable or close to what we're doing in computer engineering. We identify the broad area of studies, select a research topic, decide on an approach, plan how you will perform the research, and then we gather data and information uh, corresponding to this plan and analyze and interpret the, interpret this data so here you have your raw data then you have your information then you analyze it and uh, take this knowledge as a publication or make this uh, knowledge into uh, introduce this knowledge into 
uh, scientific domain. The problems with the sequential research process model is stages are not subject specific. So uh, it means that whether you're working in social sciences or uh, natural sciences, it doesn't matter. And there are no repetitions or cycles here. You start and go downwards and the starting point and order are all fixed. So these are the drawbacks, you can say. And in the generalized research process model here, uh, it recognizes that the stages of the research process depend on the subject and nature of the research undertaken. For example, data gathering and data analysis play no role for research in pure mathematics domain and large parts of computer science. Okay, again, it's a theoretical approach. Instead, here, in this domain, researchers make conjectures which they prove mathematically afterwards. In the generalized research process model provides alternative routes depending on the subject and nature of the research undertaken. But each route is still sequential, but we have some distinction between different disciplines at least. So, what we have here is common here, identify the broad area of study here. Like you see that it is pretty similar to Sharp's model here, what we have here. But it has different branches here, two branches here. We identify the broad area of study, select the research topic. And in the natural sciences, in the area we study for, we decide on an approach, plan the research, gather data and information, analyze and interpret this data. In mathematics, we make a conjecture here and then prove that conjecture to make our research. And in the end, again, both, uh, let's say, approaches present result and findings to scientific domain. Again, the drawbacks or problems with the generalized process model is no reputations or cycles here and starting point and order are again fixed. It means that we don't like this strict orders. In the circulatory research process model, it, it has been recognized that any research is a part of continuous cycle of discovery and investigation that never ends. It allows the research process to be joined at any point. Okay, you can enter this research here at any point. One can also revisit earlier stages as well, or like, uh, okay, I can enter research here in any of those stages. You, you have a theory or conceptual framework here, then you come up with a research question, then data collection on this research question, then you make analysis and come up with an update on the theory and literature, then another question, like you circle and circle around this one. Okay, it, it's, it's, it's much better, like uh, it looks pretty real, but you might not like it, maybe in your, I mean, um, in your master or PhD studies because you want, you want to finish it eventually in a given uh, strict time. So maybe this is more a natural uh, research process model here. That's very interesting. An example of this circulatory research process is by Rudestam and Newton's research wheel here. It's pretty, uh, let's say, interesting. Like uh, you have here again, it has been proposed here, hypothesis and data analysis and propositions. What you have here is turning and turning here and this model. What you do here is inductive reasoning and this deductive study here, what we have. Quite often research will uncover more questions then it answers. I mean, uh, I think it is very natural again. When you study on a topic, you, uh, of course, you're seeking some answers here, but you usually come up with 20 questions, for example. Okay, you're seeking maybe one or two answers, but you can come up with 20 questions. I think Voltaire's word on it, like, uh, I mean, you can judge a man by the questions he asks rather than his answers or something. And it's very natural. If you if you're coming up with lots of questions, it's very normal and natural that what we are expecting here, it's normal in the research process. And the evolutionary research process model is recognizes the research methods itself evolve and change over time. Like uh, over time, our concept of what research questions are admissible can change, what extent and methods of data collection, data collection and possible necessary ethical or reliable change, what methods 
Our data analysis are available. That, ca that can also change with computers or something. What constitutes sufficient evidence for a hypothesis? And what we mean by systematic approach to research changes? These are all uh, given uh, the possibility of uh, evolving here. That's the idea. As an example, we can consider research in mathematics in particular. When we use computers in mathematical uh, research domain, with respect to mathematical proofs, we can make the following distinctions. Proofs are created solely by humans. They are just uh, sketch them. They omit the steps that are considered too obvious. This is normal. And computer-aided mathematical truth, just for eight, structure and deductive steps still provided by humans, but certain computations are delegated to computers here. So these are another, uh, let's say, approach. And Fully formal computer-generated validated proofs are also interesting. Every step of proof is conducted and validated by computers here, possibly under the guidance by humans. So in this sense, the evolutionary, like uh, if we give some examples here, like the uh, map coloring theorem here, like the problem here, four color theorem, any planar map can be colored with at most four colors in a way that no two regions with the same color share a border. Like it has been conjectured in 1852 by Guthrie, proved in 1976 by Apple and Haken. Proof involves a case analysis of uh, like uh, 10,000 cases for which the help of a computer was used. Proof seems generally accepted, but not all by, not by all mathematicians. Like, uh, okay, it's a computer aided mathematical proof. And again, another problem is the spare packing problem, just which comes up the, with the con uh, conjecture that uh, closed packing is the densest possible spare packing. It has been done by or conjectured by Kepler in 1611 and Hayes published a proof plan in uh, 1997. Execution of a plan involves solving a uh, thousand and I'm sorry, 100,000 linear optimization problems using a computer, like, uh, and it, it took lots of space of that time. At one point, it was suggested that the proof will be published with a disclaimer saying that it is impossible for a human to check its correctness. That can be the case, of course. And among these four common views of research process, the evolutionary research process model uh, can be fit into real research process more likely and while the evolutionary reports, uh, research process model allows for the rules of the game change over time this doesn't imply that there aren't any rules of course we can stick to what we have in current trend daily trends here and as for a young researcher if you're just uh, at the start of your career as a scientist or researcher it is best to follow the current established research process models like uh, so maybe uh, you can be more familiar with, for example, sequential or generalized models, especially generalized one makes more sense to me when I look back to my PhD and Master of Science studies. They can be more meaningful and it's also natural. So that's the idea. Okay, this is about uh, all about this session. We discussed the what is research, what is knowledge, what is theory, what is originality, and we briefly talked about research processes models as well. Okay, thank you for listening.